Help me, God, listen to you send people my way to help me deal with myself and my sin. Amen. All right. You guys want some suckers or not? Okay, here you go. Hey, hey, cut that. Whoa, hey. Oh, hey, ho, oh, slow down there. Don't stop. No, no, no. Hey, Mike, go back. Go back. Go back. Yeah, right there. Hey, wait a minute now. Assist my soul. Help my soul. Assist my soul. Help my soul too apt or so apt to stray. What does that mean? Assist my soul. What are we doing in those words? We're, we're actually, are, are we like asking God to help us? Is that what's going on here? No. <laughs> yes, we are. Ask us, help me. Help me in my soul. It's so apt to stray. A stricter watch to keep. What are we saying? What are we singing there? Okay, just to keep you uncomfortable, because last service, uh, Nancy's daughter got really uncomfortable for her. She goes, you're interrupting my mom playing a song? It was planned the whole time. This is planned the whole time. In fact, go on. There's no other after this. You go to the next screen, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Because at the end of the sermon, then we'll go back to singing it and completing it. But it, it's an intentional interruption. Okay, so you're, you, everybody cool? Are you cool? Relax. Calm down. Take a chill pill. Okay? Why? It's simply to get your attention. Why? Because you're just like me, and normally we just sing the song, maybe. You might mumble it, you might sing it, you might say it, but really what's going on? God's getting your attention. Why? Because you're, you're here, you're looking, you're listening, but you may not be really listening. Hello? Wake up. God's warning you. And in all three Bible verses, to, or passages today, in the first one, there's a messenger. And God's saying to the messenger, Hey, messenger, tell the people the warning I tell you to tell them. All your job is, is to warn them. It's their job to listen. The, crew, the, the road crew, the road crew's job sees a road, a hole, a bump, a, a bridge is out. The people that go are, get paid by our state government go out there, and if something's wrong, it's their job to protect everybody. It's their job to put up a sign. Beware. Bridge out ahead. He's excited, isn't he? You're going to be a holy roller, aren't you? The Holy Spirit's just really coming out of you today already. Amen, brother. Can I get an amen? Woo-hoo. Okay, so... The road's out ahead. It, the, crew, the road crew's job is to protect us. If they don't do their job and then something would happen, they get in trouble. Old Testament, Ezekiel, his job is to give the warning. If the people listen, great. If they don't listen, not so good. But if the watchman doesn't do, be a watchman and give the warning, then the trouble's on him. I always say, don't crucify the messenger. He's just the messenger. Don't crucify me. I'm just the messenger. I'm just like one of you. Scoot over. I'm just like one of you. I'm, 
just like you guys. I, that's why I sit over there. It's because I'm one of you. But God calls people to be messengers, warners, watchmen. And he wants us. How else is he going to? It's kind of like this story. Farmer wanted to save the birds. He was in a blizzard, and the blizzard's crazy outside, and the birds kept hitting the windows because there was light in the windows in the barn. And so the birds kept hitting the windows and breaking their neck and falling down and dying. And the farmer goes, how can I save these birds from keep crashing into the windows? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll open up the loft door. So he opens up the loft door above the barn, and he puts the barn door down so that the birds could fly into the barn and be saved from the elements and protected in the uh, upstairs barn. He even turns on the light up there. There's no, and they don't see it. They keep hitting the window. And he goes, I wish I could be like a bird so I could go tell the birds, don't fly into the window. Go up into the hay loft. That's what God did. God goes, how do I get these people to understand and realize I love them, I care for them, I want to save them, I want to protect them. So he sends his son Jesus. Greatest watchman in the world. Jesus goes, unless you perish, you're going to die. Unless you can see you need to turn from your ways, you're going to die. Nobody is a worse sinner than another. We're equal. We're equal. But you and I think the other one is worse. But Jesus says, no sinner is worse than the other sinner. You're all sinners. We're all sinners. Not only does God send watchmen and warners our way to lead us to repentance, to realize, you know what? The way that you do things is wrong. You need to turn from it. You need to repent. But also, watchmen and warners point us to the right way. And in the ep epistle lesson, the epistle lesson talks about how the people a long time ago, they had a good relationship with God. God delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians and Pharaoh and he, and he brought them through the Red Sea and he gave them food to eat. But nevertheless, God was mad at them because they kept testing them. They kept turning to idolatry. They kept uh, complaining and belly aching. And, they, and they, they even indulged in pagan revelry. They committed sexual immorality. 23,000 of them were just killed in one day. And, and the people rebelled against God, and they rebelled against God, and snakes killed them. Like, a lot of people died, even though God loves them and saved them and delivered them, even though they believed in Him and followed Him, He was still angry with them because they were still not dealing with their ways. So God had Moses warn them. And today, He has pastors warn us. Teachers warn us. Cops warn us. Judges warn us. Lawyers. Doctors. Health professionals. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Stop eating bad food. Be healthy. Or you're going to die. That's their job. God says, unless you turn from your ways, you will die. Me too. Not any different. But somebody has to say, you're caught in your way, you need to see it, you need to turn and repent. Now turn. Turn from what you're doing wrong and turn to what or who? Jesus, Savior. Now, don't make this one plus one equals two. Because it isn't a, I'm in a, I'm in a quandary here. It isn't I'm in a fix here. It isn't in I'm in trouble here because of my sin. And then he'll take it away and everything's good. And now I can go back and do and be what I want to do and be. This is far more reach than that. This has to do with the salvation of your soul, your heart. Because when it comes down to it, at the end of your life, whenever that happens here in this world, and it will, because it's been written in the book of life before any day happened, before you and I live. God says in Psalm 139, 16, all the days written for me were written in God's book of life before one day came to be. Everything that happens in your life, God had already known it was going to happen. It's like he wrote it in a book before one day happened. So when it comes down to the point when you leave this world, 
Are you leaving this world to a better place? Are you leaving this world and all is well with my soul? Uh, the Challenger, the Space Shuttle Challenger. Anyone remember that? What do you remember? What do you remember? Space Challenger? What was that? School teacher died on it. January 28, 1986, they, um, they decided to take the Space Shuttle Challenger up into the sky, blew up, killed everybody. Okay? When that happened, why did that happen? Come to find out, there was discovery, there was a man who would, did not sign off on the authorization for that shuttle to take off. He was let go of his job. Then they did a research and they found out he did his job. He gave the warning. He wouldn't sign off. They, he got, lost his job and they gave, got a presidential commission, gave him his job back. And now, because of the warning, and now his team, they took on the problem, which was a faulty gasket in the engine, which would ruin if, um, if enduring a, a temperature, a cold temperature. He fixed it. They fixed it. And now, 110 flights have taken place after it. And the astronauts believe that is the most safest part of the rocket in the engine. And they have no problems with it. He gave warning and they didn't listen and destruction took place. God gives warning. And if we don't listen, destruction will take place. But here's the good news. Even if that would happen, even if you would start listening to the warnings, quit looking at your cell phones when you're driving in the car because when you do you look up you see everybody else doing it that's what I found out I put my cell phone down and I started seeing everybody else looking at their cell phones it's a reality something bad will happen but then here's the good news even when and even in that disaster, God is always standing, available and ready and willing to welcome us back. Oh, why will you die, O Jerusalem? Do not die. Turn and live. I'm sending you watchmen. I'm sending you messengers. I'm sending you warners to turn from your ways. Turn from your ways and live. Listen. Listen to the message. Turn and live. Believe God loves you. God says, why do you want to die? I take no pleasure in anyone dying. I take no pleasure even in the evil suffering. Turn. Live. God sends us messengers, sends us warners because he loves us. He loves us so much, He sent His Son to die on the cross to save us from the consequence of not listening. Amen? Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep our faith in Jesus Christ, who always loves us, who always forgives us, always welcomes us back to Him. Amen. Yeah, let's finish the song.